Welcome to the R video tutorial on k-means clustering in R. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to do k-means clustering using the k-means function in R. Okay, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is read in some data. So I'm going to write my data into k.data1. I'm using the read.csv function. I'm using the file.choose in order to have a browser pop up so I can pick out the uh, data set. And header is equal to true because my data set has a header row in it. Head k.data1 will show me the data. So let's run this. My file is k-means1.csv. I open it and it's read it in. If I look over here, I see my data set and notice there are no groups associated with this. I just have x1 values and x2 values. There are no groupings. k-means clustering is going to find how these things group together. So the first thing I need to do is determine how many groups there might be. So here I'm just going to plot k.data1. All right, so using this, we can see that there may be three clusters. One cluster here, one cluster here, and one cluster here. So I need to know how many clusters there might be in order to tell the k-means function how many clusters to look for. All right, so I'm going to use the k-means or the k-means function use k.data1, which is my data set that needs to be continuous values, no text values in there, and I have to tell it how many centers it's going to have, how many means am I looking for. And I'm going to write this into a variable called k.data1, which refers to my data, dot three means, because I'm using three means. The next thing I'm going to do is look at the centers it's found. So this k.data1.3 means is the object I've written my analysis into. Dollar sign centers gives me the centers. Now if we would look over here, you can see the centers are 9.6, 10.5 is for one of the clusters. The next one is 20 and 19. The other one is 29 and 10. So those are the centers. You also may want to see what did it classify each of the observations? So which cluster did it get classified to? So you can look at k1.3 means, which is the output of k means, and just use dollar sign cluster to find out what cluster it's used. So if I run this, you will see. Here I see I have three clusters. Notice 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. This is telling me what observation cluster has been assigned. So one means this first observation was assigned to the first cluster and so on all the way down through here. Now what's really useful is actually to be able to visualize this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another plot that creates each cluster by itself. So I'm going to have cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, all being in different colors. And yes there's a better way to do this in R. However this forces you to remember other items from R. So here I'm going to take my original data, k.data1, and I'm going to subset it based off of which cluster it's in. Here, cluster 1, and I'm going to color it red. And I've just done some scaling in order to make sure everything fits on the plot. I'm doing the same thing, k.data1, and I'm subsetting it on cluster equals 2. And I have to use the analysis, k.data1.3 means is the item that has the results from this, and I'm coloring it blue, and I'm doing it again for cluster equals 3, and I'm coloring it C green. So let's look at this. All right, so you can see it's picked out three clusters, actually the three clusters we would have picked out visually. However, in higher dimensions you can't see things as easy, but it's nice to know that it actually does the right things usually. Uh, so here it's picked out three clusters, and what we also might want to do is put where did it find its centers? So I'm going to come back over to the code. I have points function again, and here I'm having it plot the centers, and I'm changing the point character to two, and the color will be green, and we will add this to our picture. So when we come back over here, you can see a green triangle in the center of each of these clusters. So this works great in high dimensions. This is typically where it's used, but it's really easy to see in two dimensions. That's why I've done this. So if you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.